So I'd like to begin as we always do in our prayer. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. God of hope and healing, give us fresh vision as we work to serve and learn. May we be active participants in your miracles and commit ourselves to action. Inspire us to do your will as we plan, teach, and learn. Help us to discern when to rest, when to feast, and how to actively engage our faith as we work. Do the impossible in and through us. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our healing Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, and our land acknowledgement. We are gathered on the ancestral lands and waters of all Indigenous peoples who have left their footprints on Mother Earth before us. We respectfully acknowledge those who have walked on it, those who walk on it now, and future generations who have yet to walk upon it. We pray to the Creator for strength and wisdom that all may continue to serve as stewards of the Earth. So uh, thank you for joining us today. Our session facilitators are Paul and myself. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions in the chat. We will be facilitating the chat as we go. We'll take our cue from Larissa as she goes along in the presentation. Um, hopefully we won't interrupt her too many times, but it's important to get your questions answered as quickly as possible. Okay, and just a quick uh, agenda. We have our introductory slides that we're doing now, then uh, the training from Larissa will commence, and then we will finish up. Uh, I'll show you a brief, um, just quick going through the onboarding document that we have specific for YCDSB that was also posted in the system memo. So uh, some of you might be familiar, but I'll just quickly go through that. And with that, uh, I will hand it over to our valued guest today, uh, Larissa Hoffman, Vice President of Edge Factor. Take it away, Larissa. Awesome. Thank you so much. I have to say, um, I have been on many webinars training uh, all of the different school boards across the province, and I just love how organized you guys are. This is that's that's really awesome. I'm so excited to share today's webinar with you and really walk through the Edge Factor platform. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to present today. I'm going to be walking through the platform and the tools and the features that we have available for all of you uh, to enjoy and to be able to share with your students to really move them forward in their learning. I'm going to start with an overview of kind of the heart behind Edge Factor, and then we're going to go through how to log in, uh, an overview of the platform's tools. You know, what are the what are the things that we've created that you can access? We're going to go through how to search things, uh, how to easily um, access the content as it pertains to Ontario curriculums and really begin to understand how to assign that content, sharing it with your students as well. Then we'll go through a little bit of the support. And I encourage you, if you've got any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them in the live chat. And um, you can feel free to interrupt the, the session if you want, uh, or else we can also open it up for Q&A at the very end as well. Awesome. So here I am on the edgefactor.com platform. And our goal, our mission is really to take students and even by extension, job seekers and parents on a journey from I have no idea what I wanna do with my life all the way to I have successfully launched a local training and career pathway. And so when you think about that journey, and I'm gonna be putting some helpful uh, links in our, our live chat as well, this is a key features page. I'm gonna access the live chat. There we go. I'm gonna pop this in there so you can, you can click on that link and, and check this out on your own as well. When you think about that career journey, there are four key phases that all of our content is categorized under. Number one, inspiration. Two, exploration, preparation, and then finally, connection. When you think about somebody going from, I have no idea what I wanna do with my life to I have successfully connected with my local training and career pathways, these are the four key phases in that career journey. And we're gonna be going through some of those uh, today to, to walk through the content that we have available under each. This page that I, I uh, listed in the live chat for features, you can watch an overview video to see uh, how this all works together. And you can also check out the direct links to all of the different 
features that we're going to touch on today. So this is an overview of the, the features on the platform, the content that we create, and we also have a helpful tool. Uh, it's almost the same link, <laughs> but it's Ontario. This link um, has some of the same information at the top, but then towards the bottom, we talk about all of the different ways that we align to curriculum. So we've taken our content and aligned it specifically to Ontario curriculums and programs. And this is another uh, very, very helpful tool for you. So to start at the beginning, and I know that, uh, Paul, you're going to walk through this uh, towards the end of the call as well, as you mentioned, we have a getting started document that we've created for you. It outlines some of those key features, some of the key Ontario curriculums, and it also has very important information on how to log in to use these tools. And so Paul's going to be going through that. So I've logged into the Edge Factor platform. And I'm going to start with the Stories tab on the sidebar. The two key ways to navigate the platform, you've got the sidebar, the left navigation with all of these different tabs, and then you also have the Search Content button. We're going to, we're going to walk through both of those. So the Stories tab is all about inspiration, that first phase in the career journey. And really, our goal here is to help answer the question uh, for students, what is out there? Um, how, uh, what are the different industries that, that uh, exist in terms of real life storytelling? So where, the way that we inspire our audiences and, and kind of open their eyes and get them excited to think about their future is really using the power of storytelling. So we've created many award-winning films, uh, TV episodes, short stories. One of the things that I wanted to highlight today was specifically the careers of the future, uh, talking about how emerging and disruptive technologies are really shaping uh, the future of work and future careers. And as you scroll down, you can hover over each of these different thumbnails to learn a little bit about what that story is about. It's kind of like, Netflix, right? You sign into Netflix, you've got access to all of their content. The same is true for Edge Factor. As I scroll down, I'm going to click on Happy Accident for a minute. This was a film that we created with a world famous skateboard maker. And we uh, told the story of how he creates these skateboards, but also of how he meets a young athlete, uh, a young skateboard rider, and uh, this person has a knee injury. And so together they design and build a skateboard and then he goes on to win his first X Games gold medal. So it's a film that talks about construction, carpentry, technology. They use science, engineering, you know, uh, art and math in unique ways. They work as a team. They embrace failure to find success together. So this is a story that, uh, yes, while it's fun and cinematic and it's engaging for students, the goal is ultimately with all of our stories to help them understand that a career and understanding uh, the technology and the soft skills that come along with that career can empower you to solve problems, to make a difference in the world, to uh, be a contributor to companies, as well as even start your own companies, cultivating that entrepreneurial spirit. Here, for instance, Reach Beyond, we partnered with NASA to create a story of a young woman who uh, creates a part that goes to the International Space Station, and she's still in high school. The story of Tyler Brown, uh, homeless at one point, living in a tent with his family and his younger brother. In his high school program, he learns everything needed uh, to build and design a solar car, takes it on an epic race uh, across the country, and uh, launches a career immediately after high school. So all of these different stories, the goal is the same. We want to showcase real life stories of people accomplishing uh, big things, overcoming obstacles, and launching rewarding careers. We weave in their uh, training uh, experience, et cetera, that, that they uh, received as well. Inspiration leads to the second phase, which is exploration. So I just clicked on the careers tab, and if there was ever uh, the top link that I would want you to click on, this is it. So I'm going to pop it in in our live chat. Here you've got all of these different industries that Edge Factors created content for. You've got agriculture, construction, manufacturing, healthcare, transportation, IT, hospitality and tourism. The list goes on. Some of these are more robust than others. Uh, the ones towards the top, um, especially in the skilled trades, we have built out uh, hundreds and hundreds of tools across these industries. 
the uh, I would say human services, we are lacking content right now. We are busy creating content like crazy. In fact, in the last uh, 11 months, we have created almost 1300 new videos in Ontario alone. So we have, are filming like crazy. And uh, even as late as last week, we filmed with five different companies um, and, and we continue to create more content and we're filling the buckets that we do not yet have uh, a lot of content for. So if I click, uh, let's say I'm gonna click on construction for a minute. Here you've got a page with all of the content that we've created as it relates to the construction industry. So right at the top, there's a student directed activity it's kind of like a self-guided tour for students that you can assign to them uh, for them to complete. And I'm going to talk about that in a bit on how to assign this content. And as I scroll down under exploration, there are three key tool types. Number one, an industry overview video. So for all of those uh, industries, we've created about a two minute video that talks about what does that industry look like in today's modern world? What are some of the careers in technology that exist? The second key tool type are career profile videos. And here you've got three to five minute videos. Here's one actually with Jamie McMillan. Many, many of you might know uh, Jamie. She's a good friend of the Edge Factor community. Um, all of these different career profile videos showcase what a day in the life looks like. So for instance, a plumber, what, uh, what does a day in the life of a plumber look like? How do they use steam? How do they use soft skills? I think of the construction carpenter, a woman named Heather. Uh, she's in the Algonquins area. She's an entrepreneur and she's creating um, home decor based off of recycled materials. So at her, uh, in her career profile, she's sharing how creative uh, technical business skills are empowering her to use her love for carpentry uh, to start a business and to, to sell her products. So all of these different career profiles, um, you can begin to understand they're about, you know, two to three minutes long typically. And uh, they also come with quizzes for the most part as well. So you've got industry overviews, career profile videos, and thirdly, virtual workplace experiences. Now here we are on the construction page. I'm gonna take a quick minute. I'm gonna open up a new tab for, for a moment. I really wanna highlight bigger picture what do the virtual workplace experiences look like? And how many have we created? So I just clicked on search content. I clicked on the series tab. Here's where I can view content by series. And I'm gonna click on virtual workplace experiences. I'm also gonna pop this in our live chat so you can check it out. Even if you're not logged in, you can see the content that exists. You just won't be able to play it until you're logged in. So here, uh, going back to that idea of the fact that we've created 1300 videos in Ontario, really uh, in a COVID year, that is just absolutely outrageous. Uh, we've had to get very creative and um, uh, just in terms of the protocols and, and safety measures that we've taken over the last year, we have done it safely. Um, and essentially, I'm just gonna click on a, a random one. I'll click on automotive repair for a moment. A virtual workplace experience has a pre-video quiz. So here it says, list your top five car brands. Great, I can enter my response right there. What makes one brand of car more unique than another? So getting students to think about automotive, getting them to think about uh, vehicles, and then the video. Typically these are between eight minutes long and uh, 15 minutes long, and they each cover a menu. I'm gonna pause here. Uh, a menu of what does this video include? So in this one, for instance, at Ford, we filmed automotive company and shop overview, vehicle diagnosis, uh, the repair shop, as well as the importance of a service dispatcher. Cool, I'm gonna jump ahead, I'm gonna put this on mute and just click play for a minute. So here you've got a host of the video walking us through a dynamic look of what it's like to work in this industry. One of the ones that I, uh, I absolutely love in transportation is the one that we filmed with um, Emily Chung as well. She did an awesome overview. Uh, if I click here, watch now, I can jump ahead to her video as well. Many of you would know Emily. Uh, this was of course filmed in Ontario with Emily Chung, an awesome spokesperson for the world of automotive. And the goal is the same. We've got a pre-quiz, pre-video quiz, post-video quiz, and a lesson plan. 
And so here in each of these virtual field trips, they're talking about what are the technologies that they use, uh, you know, how do they work together as a team, really answering what are the key aspects of what it's like to work in that industry and at that company. They also come with a lesson plan. And I'll do that a little bit uh, slower. I did that kind of quickly. So here on this sidebar, I've got my pre-video quiz, my post-video quiz, my video, and the lesson plan. When I click on the lesson plan, the download button is here, and I just clicked download, and it downloads it as a PDF. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so you can see it better. Here we've got a lesson plan that talks about what are the objectives and learning goals, what will students learn through this lesson plan, what are the resources and supplies, and we also have some accompanying tools as well. So for instance, while we were on set of this virtual field trip, we also grabbed the opportunity to create a career profile video featuring Emily as well, and the links are right there. Then we've got step-by-step -step instructions for how you can share this with your students, as well as some baked-in questions that you can uh, ask your students to complete as well. There's also on page three, if you've got a, if you're using uh, my blueprint or if you're using a student portfolio system and you wanna provide your students with a badge, you can click here to download this image and share it with your students and their step-by-step -step instructions on uh, what that looks like as well. So every single one of our virtual workplace experiences has a lesson plan. We are releasing content so quickly, uh, rapidly. And we've got basically a, a team of Ontario educators, three uh, educators that are, are working full time for Edge Factor, and they go live with the video and then they follow up with those quizzes and with the lesson plans afterwards. So I'm going to keep scrolling down here. If I click on show all, we just have an absolute ton of content here uh, under construction, under agriculture, under manufacturing. Here you've got hairdressing hospitality and tourism. We just filmed uh, at the Hampton Inn and Suites. This just went live actually this morning. We have filmed a tremendous amount with indigenous community members and with women in skilled trades. In fact, one of the biggest focuses that we've had when we've been creating these 1300 videos is really making sure that we've got good representation, both uh, to move that OEAP special projects forward for indigenous uh, community members to be featured as well as, of course, uh, women in the skilled trades. We continue to build out more content under healthcare. We've got a ton of career profiles for that as well. Lots under agriculture. Almost everything that you're seeing here was filmed in Ontario. The Toronto Zoo, that one is, is an awesome one for you guys located in York Region. Uh, we filmed actually two at the Toronto Zoo um, under reptile conservation. In fact, uh, one of these, the host is Indigenous as well. We've got apple farms, winemaking from the Niagara region, strawberry farms, landscaping, cow life cycles, dairy farms uh, a little bit up north, ice sculptures, deep libraries under manufacturing, engineering, tool and dye, uh, you know, metal forming, welding, mechatronics, robotics, aircraft. We did another one. We just filmed actually at the Wyerton International Airport, and I met with the Brantford Airport uh, earlier this week. So we're just firing honestly on all cylinders to create mass amounts of content. And the reason why I wanted to spend a little bit more time than, uh, than on other content uh, for virtual workplace experiences with you is because while we're on set of a virtual workplace experience, we create additional tools. And those, I'm gonna go back to the careers page for a minute, and this time I'm gonna click on a different one. I'm gonna click on uh, agriculture. Um, while we're on set of a virtual workplace experience, again, we we film, we grab the opportunity to create career profiles as well as soft skills moments and STEAM moments. And so we've got, um, while we're on set, the opportunity to really dig deeper into some of these learning moments. And that brings us into preparation. So under preparation, we've got STEAM and soft skills. STEAM, how does science, technology, engineering, art, and math all come alive in the real world? For instance, on the agriculture page, the science of forestry, you know, what is a, a, a plantation forest? Um, how do the forestry life cycle, how is that related to some of the things that your students are learning in their science classrooms? Obviously, there's lots of technology that comes alive uh, when you're thinking about agriculture, under horticulture, under sustainability practices, the list goes on and on. 
So our focus on STEAM is really how does STEAM come alive on the job? Then we also step into, uh, of course, soft skills. And we all know, everybody on the call, uh, there is nothing soft about soft skills. Really, these are employability uh, and ethics skills that will truly empower our youth to lead uh, in the future. And so soft skills, I'm going to jump now out of the agriculture page. We've got some content here that talks about, for instance, how Danielle uh, is using um, uh, her entrepreneurial and soft skills in her company. But I'm going to hop over now into the sidebar again on soft skills. And here, it's not so much based off of industry. It's, it's more about ethics, employability, and financial literacy. And so here we've got ethics topics like, what does it mean to be entitled? Uh, Work-life balance, hard work can be good for you. Who made my boss the boss? Why does, you know, why does that <laughs> uh, person get to tell me what to do? What does it mean to be addicted to something, even if that something is your phone or TikTok? As I scroll down, employability skills, uh, communication, initiative, leadership, problem solving. I'm going to click on one of these. I'm going to click on analytical problem solving for a minute. Uh, this is a, the videos are approximately six to eight minutes long. It has a host speaking directly to the audience. It's story driven, uh, as well as it has a comedic um, uh, approach as well. And there's lesson plans and quizzes attached to these videos too. So again, you can click on that lesson plan and you can download it and there will be step-by-step -step instructions uh, for how to use this video. As I scroll down again, you've got uh, guided practice instructions. There's even some uh, small group activities that can be done over Zoom uh, to get students almost in breakout sessions, kind of role-playing these different soft skills. So employability, uh, we've got the success factor series that I just walked through, as well as uh, what we would call breakout videos. And these are moments with people in industry sharing how they use soft skills. For instance, an auto body technician talking about lifelong learning, uh, an HVAC talking about the importance of customer service, an elevator technician, uh, you know, problem solving, the list goes on and on. So each of these are shorter. They're about one minute long, easy to plug and play into your classrooms to talk about soft skills that matter. We also have the financial literacy series. I'm going to click on learn more here. I could also access this page under search content right under created for you. And so here you've got, uh, it is a 10 unit series. The first five units uh, are available. Unit one, why is financial literacy important? I'm going to click on this. You've got four videos and an accompanying lesson plan. So each unit has, I think, three to four uh, videos attached to it, as well as a lesson plan. Really talking about the need and, and the uh, helping students to understand and manage their finances. We've got five more units that we are currently uh, working on. We're finalizing the lesson plans, and those will be live by the end of the school year as well. So I know it's a lot of information. Obviously, we've got a ton of content, and honestly, we continue to film, so it's it's uh, it's a good problem to have. What we've done is aligned it to Ontario curriculums. And so when I click on the search content button right under created for you, you will be able to see curriculum aligned pages that we've created. I'm gonna start with Ontario Catholic School graduation expectations. If uh, at the top it says, you know, Edge Factor content aligns to the OCSGE, if I click on View Curriculum Overview, great, here it is. I can check out a discerning believer, uh, an effective communicator, the list goes on. So what we've done is we've said, okay, our content, we've got content that showcases a discerning believer, and here they are. Uh, as I scroll down, an effective communicator bringing in some of our soft skills. As I scroll down, you know, a self-directed, responsible learner. Here you've got uh, the Newsboys, a, a Christian um, uh, band, very, very well known. Um, so we brought in someone who demonstrates their God-given potential. So the concept is quite simple, right? We're taking the Ontario curriculums and we're saying this is the content that we've created that speaks to those uh, expectations. Ontario Catholic School one is an easy one to understand. Grade 10 career studies also pretty straightforward. I'm going to click on that one for a moment. Again, the concept is the same. You've got the curriculum overview that you can refer to at the very top. And then we've taken each of those strands and aligned our content to that 
uh, curriculum. And so you can, as an educator, come in here and say, okay, it's time to teach strand A2, decision-making strategies. And you can assign this content for your students to complete. I'm gonna touch on that in just a moment. I wanna uh, showcase now the Tech Ed and SHSM skilled trades curriculum. This one is rather robust. <laughs> it, it goes by industry. If I click on manufacturing, for instance, this is organized by stream, the TMJ4M, 4C, 4E, and SHSM. If I click on the first one, university and college preparation, concept is the same. We've taken the con our content and we've aligned it per stream. And all of the curriculum codes are here, as well as, of course, we've adopted the language and the terms to make it as easy as possible for educators who are teaching these curriculums to come in and understand when and how to use Edge Factor Media. So on the one hand, just as we went through, you could go through and, and navigate uh, these different tabs, check out the media that we have. You can add things to your favorites by hovering over a thumbnail and simply clicking on the heart. That will add it to your favorites on the sidebar so you can easily find it later. Um, and then you can also assign this content. So let's talk uh, a little bit about that. Um, really quickly, Paul, did you, I don't want to step on uh, what you were hoping to present on. Are you okay with me walking through how to create classes and assign content? Yep, go ahead. I was literally just going to spend 30 seconds just showing them the document, showing them the code, and uh, just going through it briefly, but uh, that would be very helpful if you could do that part. Absolutely. Okay, so let's click on classroom on the sidebar here. Right off the top, this is my demo account. So I've got a lot of classes that I've built. I can check it out via grid view or list view. And I can always remove things, you know, delete my old classes as well by clicking on re remove. I'm going to add a class right now. And we're going to call this, uh, I'm going to call it um, your Catholic District School Board. And here, uh, let's say my class ID, it's not required. And my class details, I'm just going to say discover industries and career opportunities. And let's say this is for my grade nine students. Here, I can also upload my own graphic. If, if I've got a graphic thumbnail that I want to use, I can do that. I'm just going to use Edge Factor standard one for now, and I'm going to click Create Class. Awesome. It says, New class has been added. And I'm going to scroll down. Voila, it's the very last one. And I'm going to click on Open. So now I've just created a class, and there's nobody in it, and I've got no assignments in it. No problem. I'm going to go back into careers. And let's say the goal of this class was to uh, showcase healthcare. I want to encourage my students to view some careers on healthcare and learn about these opportunities. Awesome. So I'm going to check out the skilled responder videos. Cool. Therapeutic uh, horse riding, massage therapist. Awesome. Scrolling down, I'm looking at the virtual workplace experiences. And here, there is the assign icon on the sidebar. And I'm gonna click on that. So this, the icon always looks the same, three dots and a plus symbol. And I'm gonna add it here, your Catholic District School Board. Now I have an option. I can A, add it to an existing assignment of which I have not created any, so I can't do that yet. Or two, create a new assignment. And I'm gonna create a new assignment. I'm gonna call this uh, Career Profiles. And I'm going to click create. Awesome. It says you've just assigned this content to your class. Do you want to keep browsing or view? I'm going to keep browsing. I want to, I want to look into some other options. I'm going to click on search content. This is another way to get to the careers page. Uh, maybe now I want to include some content on um, manufacturing. I'm going to click on the manufacturing page. I want to add a couple of videos from uh, career profiles under that industry as well. And I'm going to scroll down. Excellent. So steel fabrication. Cool. I'm going to hover over this thumbnail and I'm going to click on that assign icon. Here, your Catholic District School Board. And this time, instead of creating a new assignment, I'm going to add it to my existing career profiles. And I'm going to click assign. I want to keep browsing. I want to add a couple more videos here. I'm going to scroll down. Uh, yeah, steel beam fabrication. Cool. Add it to my my class, your Catholic District School Board. And this time I'm gonna call this virtual field trips. 
create. So now I've got two assignments that I can add content to. I'm going to take a look to see where, where things are at. I want to make sure that uh, you know it's, it's looking good. So here I'm in my York Catholic District School Board. There's my career profiles assignment. And here is my virtual field trips. So underneath career profiles, I can see that there's a quiz, a video, and a quiz, a pre-video and a post-video activity, as well as the steel fabrication new video. Maybe this time I don't care about the quizzes. I just want my students to watch the videos. No problem. I can always choose to click on visible and that will make it hidden. I can also undo that at any time by clicking it again. I want to see what my students will see. I'm going to click on start assignment for a minute. I just want to preview what, the, what this looks like for them. Awesome. Here I've got my quiz, my video, my quiz, and my next video. So it's looking good. I'm building it out. Awesome. So here, um, now the goal is that I need to add my students because you can build as many assignments as you want, but if you don't have any students in them, how are they going to access it? So here, right at the top, if you're familiar with Google Classroom, this should be easy for you. Copy and share code. Each class has a class code, and here it is for my York Catholic District School Board. I'm going to click copy and share code. And all I'm going to do is send that to my students. So maybe I emailed it to them. Maybe I put it on, on the uh, chat of my Zoom call. Um, but I'm going to share this with my students. And they're going to go in and they're going to create or log in to their Edge Factor membership with Google Single Sign-On. And they're simply going to click Quick Code and enter it here. And what that will do is it will connect them then to your class. And you will be able to add, edit users and you'll be able to see the pending. So once your students add the quick code, you as the educator will be able to see their list and you can approve, 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 and make sure that you are in control of who is in your class. All of this information um, is included in the package that we've made available. So you've got your uh, page one, key features, Ontario curriculums, uh, option uh, one for logging in via Google, and then option two, if you use D2L, all of your classes would already appear. If you have D2L and you've created classes within D2L Brightspace, you will, in that drop down, when you choose to assign content, all of your classes from D2L will appear here. Um, and then we've got step-by-step -step instructions on getting started, how to create a class, here's some help desk articles, how to assign content, how to bookmark content as well to, to save it to your favorites. So the key is step one, sign in. Use your quick code to log in to the Edge Factor platform. That's included here on page two. So you, as educators, first need to make sure that you've got access to the platform. You've got to go to edgefactor.com, Create your membership. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through this. I'm going to log out for a minute. So go to edgefactor.com, click log in, um, and you can sign in or sign up with Google. If I click sign up free, I've got the option. I can sign in with sign up with Google. And then I have to make sure, though, after I create my membership, that I insert my quick code. Otherwise, you've got a free membership. You don't have access to everything. So you have to remember to please put in your school quick code so that you are now linking your free membership to your paid York Catholic District School Board membership. I'm going to refresh my page, and I'm going to log back in. So step one, log in yourself. Make sure you've got that quick code so that you're attached to the right school. You will know that you are attached to the right school because it will say it right here. It'll say Larissa, your Catholic, and then the school, uh, school name. Then the second step, hop into classroom, add a class, and add content to that class. So one of the things that I wanted to also highlight in today's session is uh, the idea that Edge Factor has been partnering with Kidder. Uh, we shared some really great calls with your um, administrators, and we understand that you are using and you've purchased Kidder kits, and that's awesome. Uh, I know that your uh, school board has some key 
lesson plans or, or planning guides that they've created to walk you through this. And what we've done is we've created some playlists to, to accompany those kitter kits. And so for instance, the wind turbine kit, the wood cabin and the robotic arm, we've got three that we've aligned to right now. If I click on the wood cabin one, this is basically a playlist that you can use to accompany your students completing their kitter kit. If you're unfamiliar with kitter, um, you can of course ask uh, your key administrators on, on do you have access, where is my kitter kit? Kitter is essentially uh, their hands-on activities for STEAM. And so we have just in the last, uh, I think, two to three weeks partnered uh, officially with Kidder and we are aligning playlists of our career exploration videos and quizzes to Kidder Kits to really make that connection between what are students doing uh, for their hands-on activities, how do those relate to industries and careers. So the Wood Cabin one, here you've got a tutorial video, there's uh, a quiz, the construction industry overview video, another quiz, and then some questions based off of each of these different three career profiles and some reflection questions. So we've, we're, we're trying to make these things as easy as humanly possible for you guys to get in there and plug and play. And you can simply, again, click on that assign icon right in the playlist if you want to add it to your class, your Catholic District School Board. I'm going to create a new assignment kidder wood cabin create i'm going to click view and it takes me back into my classroom where i can then view the kidder kit sorry i added it to the wrong class i think <laughs> oh wait no i didn't sorry that was on my earlier call york catholic district school board <laughs> there we go kidder wood cabin and here again you've got that playlist of content with all of the quizzes attached to it so that uh, we continue to create a lot of different playlists. We've got, I think, uh, four or five more Kidder Kits that we are, are aligning content to, creating playlists. And you'll see this page uh, for the Kidder Kit really begin to build out with lots of different kits. So if you've got any more that you uh, want to purchase, let us know, and we will absolutely create an accompanying playlist for you. So we have gone, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just open up um, that features page again. We have gone through, and I'm going to do a quick recap here, inspiration, exploration, preparation, and one of the things that we haven't touched on is connection. Connection is all about how do we connect students and job seekers with local training and local companies. And this is a massive work in progress. It is a community-wide initiative, honestly, that Edge Factor is working on uh, with many, many, many communities across Ontario. And the goal there is being able to add profiles under the create piece, uh, add a profile on all of the schools, as well as all of the programs. So really helping students to understand what are the SHSM, what are the OYAP programs, co-op opportunities that are available at my school and helping them to, uh, helping basically to create those profiles as well as to sort them by region. Because I don't need your students learning about what's available at Thunder Bay Catholic uh, School Board. I need them learning about what's in your school board um, locally. So that is something that will be, uh, I would say, a work in progress, um, some, some development happening there as well as the ability for companies to add their company profiles as well. And that is completely free for companies to add their company uh, information. If they've got content that they've created, if they've got descriptions, awesome. All of that information can be added to the Edge Factor platform. So we are uh, really moving um, a lot of things forward in that connection piece as well. So we've gone through inspirational stories, careers of the future series, industry and career profile videos, virtual workplace experiences, virtual field trips, STEAM on the job, soft skills and financial literacy, local training programs, your school profiles, as well as touching on company profiles. We also have free toolkits if you're looking to host an event. Uh, again, on that sidebar, you can check out free toolkits. There are keynote presentations. Uh, right now is Women in Skilled Trades, we're celebrating uh, of course, all of the uh, stories that we've told across Ontario that highlight women in skilled trades. And you can access this by clicking on search content, experiences, women in skilled trades. 
This has free media. You can literally copy and paste this link. Your students don't even need to log in, although I encourage them to always log in so you can monitor uh, what they're doing. But this page is open to the public and there's a keynote presentation that I created as well as uh, some really cool best practices on how to host virtual events for you and for companies and your local workforce development leaders even to play a role in that. One of the things that I wanted to touch on very briefly, uh, virtual reality. If you have Oculus goggles, we've got, I believe, six experiences coming out uh, very, very soon. We are waiting on the final approval of the app uh, for this to go live, and you will uh, make sure to, to stay tuned on, on more information with that. We also wanted to highlight some of the support services that we provide. So number one, if you ever have a question, help desk in the bottom left-hand corner, I encourage you, spend some time. If you're looking for, for instance, how do I create my class? You can search class and you've got all of these different articles uh, and we're, we're creating a bunch of tutorial videos as well to accompany these articles. Uh, so the help desk is a great tool for you to find quick and easy answers to your questions. How do I change my password? All those types of uh, questions you can find here with step-by-step -step instructions and uh, screenshots to accompany them to make it uh, very, very clear. The second thing is live chat. If you've got a question at any time in the Edge Factor uh, platform, you can click on the right hand uh, chat bot and you can chat with us. Um, and we've got a couple of standard answers as well as if you still need help after we share the help desk articles, if I click yes here, then you'll be connected with one of our live team members. We also have phone and email support. So if you ever have any questions, I really want you guys to understand, we are here to help you. If you're feeling like, you know, I need an, a refresher, how do you assign content? You can give us a call, you can email us, you can check out the help desk, you can also attend one of our weekly webinars at uh, every Wednesday at 1 p.m. So right in the bottom of the footer of the, the platform, you can check out this page, you can watch pre-recorded webinars that we've, we've done. You can also uh, sign up for one of our weekly, or you can also sign up for a custom closed session uh, demo as well. And we'd be happy to answer your questions. This is also uh, our email address. I'm gonna put this in the live chat so that you've got our contact info. Awesome. So um, I believe that is everything that I wanted to cover today. Lou, uh, I know that you're on the call. Is there anything specifically that you wanted me to cover in, uh, in more detail? No, I think you've done a fantastic job of, of I mean, uh, even uh, scraping the, uh, the, 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 uh, the top part of the iceberg, because honestly, you know, you could really get, uh, get into uh, all of the material here um, where we really do value the partnership with Edge Factor. And I know that as we get more and more comfortable with the platform, that we're going to be able to really take advantage of it with our students. So thank you very much uh, for uh, being such a fantastic partner and always willing to do, uh, you know, these these sessions with our, with our staff at the drop of a hat. And I see that Jermaine is smiling <laughs> and being as flexible as you are. So thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Happy, happy to help. Um, I guess the one of the only things that I, I feel like I didn't cover in today's session, if I click on search content underneath created for you, make sure that you see a lot of tabs here. If you sign in and for whatever reason, you're like, man, I only see recommended this month, make sure that under your account, my account, it says that you're from Ontario. Under edit, make sure that your information says Ontario, Canada. If I switch this out, to uh, other states, I will see their curriculum pages. I really wanna see Ontario for you guys. So you can add your province as well as your local zip code, uh, postal code, because here you'll be able to um, see local content as well. And we're really doing a lot to uh, make sure that we're, we're uh, structuring our platform and tagging our system in a way that would be able to really put the most pertinent information in front of our users based on who they are, based on their objectives and where they're located. So we're working like crazy on the development of this uh, platform as well, just to make it smarter and smarter and easier and easier to use. One of the things that if you ever have uh, a question, you can always search as well. If you, if you want to search welding, uh, you know, you want to see all the content that Edge Factor's got under welding, check out that keyword search. Um, you can click on inspiration, check out all of the films that we have 
that showcase welding, exploration, all of the career profiles and virtual workplace experiences that feature welding. And right from here, you can add things to your favorites by clicking on the heart. Then under preparation, what are all of the STEAM videos, as well as even Skills Ontario videos. Uh, we've very closely partnered with Skills Ontario. Um, and so lots of, lots of content there that you can check out too under search content. We've got a whole tab uh, called Skills Ontario with many, about 20 different videos that we've created with them. Um, under Tech Ed and SHSM, there was two last things that I wanted to highlight. Number one, we've created uh, for the OEAP coordinators on the call, uh, we've, we've created a video on OEAP and girls in skilled trades to really encourage young female students to get involved in apprenticeships and same thing for indigenous tradespeople. So these are some hype videos as well as promo tools that you can use for both SHSM and for OEAP and co-ops for reasons businesses, businesses should get involved. The power of SHSM and experiential learning inspirational stories from Ontario of SHSM programs. So all of that is under your uh, tech ed and SHSM curriculum pages as well. And under experiences, you can also check out a page with all content featuring Indigenous tradespeople. So underneath this special focus page, as I scroll down, every single video that you see here um, highlights uh, an Indigenous person in the skilled trades all of these different virtual workplace experiences have the host as well as this OYAP video um, of all of our different Indigenous uh, partners. So very, very cool. I'm going to leave it there and I'm, I'm going to open it up for questions. Feel free to take yourself off of mute. I'm going to spend a, a quick minute going through the live chat to make sure I didn't miss anything as well. Lou, sign me up for winemaking. We have told, so the stu the Edge Factor studio is right beside uh, a wine, uh, a winery, a vineyard. And so we created, I think, uh, literally from the very beginning stages all the way to the end, the full winemaking process across several virtual workplace experiences. Which, which vineyard? Uh, Malivoir. And the most bizarre thing about filming uh, with Malivoir was that um, the guy's name is Shiraz. Like his parents actually named him Shiraz. <laughs> Seriously, you can't make that stuff up. That's just wild. So That's pretty cool though. <laughs> that is, Lou, he was Lou, born you, for it. Lou, you may have joined us late. This is being recorded. Oh, <laughs> darn. <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> oh. So Jean's asking um, Edge Factor and SHSMs. Uh, wh what does that mean exactly? Um, potentially use for SHSM to create a virtual field trip with assignment. So basically, just to fulfill some of the components for SHSM. So as Frank mentioned, he probably clarified it a little bit better. So any kind of experiential learning or reach ahead activities that uh, students need to complete could be something that could be assigned through Edge Factor. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Adrian, uh, Adrienne is asking uh, school quick codes. I see that Paul uh, answered her. He's got the link right there. Awesome. Yeah, no expiration date right now. That's right. Should we sign in with K to 12 accounts if we want to add to Google Classrooms? Yes. So it's you do need to log in. Uh, to the Edge Factor platform to be able to access the content. Again, just like Netflix, you got to log in, you've got access. Yeah, thank you so much, Frank, for answering those as well. Yes. Awesome. So it's 12.06. I think we were technically booked until 12.15. Does anybody else have any questions or thoughts or feedback that you would like to share at this time? Aerospace. Do you have anything uh, aerospace related? Uh, uh, yes, yes. So we just uh, we filmed at the Wyerton um, Airport just last week, and we've got more content as well uh, that we have filmed that showcases pieces of of aviation. So if I go, just give me a quick second here. I'm going to present again. So if I click on stories, uh, there's a couple of key stories that we have that featured aerospace as I scroll down. Some of the ones. Um, 
So we've got uh, Adrenaline Junkie. That one features some aerospace content. Uh, and, um, and kicking at, uh, what was it? Turning Tables. Turning Tables is the other one, which is underneath Inspirational Female Leads, the first one. So both of that covers uh, some aerospace, but I will say we've got some uh, virtual workplace experiences and careers that will uh, showcase that in more detail. So if you click on, again, the keyword search, one in doubt, keyword search, aerospace. Another one that I forgot about, uh, additive manufacturing. So really learning, I think we, we filmed this one with uh, uh, GE, Parker Hannafin. So this would be an awesome one to talk about how are, uh, how is additive manufacturing impacting the world of aerospace? There's also a quality control inspector um, that, that does some stuff with aerospace, aircraft foam technician, uh, aerospace operations and management. So we've got a lot of content actually, especially even I think under exploration, we've got a couple of virtual workplace experiences um, that you can add to your favorites as well as these different career profiles, aircraft upholstery technician, <laughs> avionics technician, so the list goes on. Man machining apprentice uh, with a special look at uh, aerospace too. Okay, perfect. Um, what I'll do uh, at this time is I'll just spend one minute to quickly go through our uh, documentation here. Um, and I'll uh, hit on Leo's question about the, the Google Classroom as well. Um, so here, and I'll put in the chat. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Jermaine. Um, Jermaine has put in the chat the onboarding documentation, which looks like this. Um, if you use D2L Brightspace, then um, I have a video tutorial. So you simply click there for the video tutorial and it shows you how to uh, um, sign in, how to uh, make that link between your D2L class and Edge Factor. So follow the tutorial there. Um, if you're using Google Classroom, then you would follow the steps here. And I really have breaking, broken it down very, very um, you know, easily by steps. So you're gonna sign up for free and then you're gonna use your Google account um, we recommend using your YCDSB account. Once you do that, then again, I gave the instructions. You're going to click on Quick Code at the top, and you're going to use our YCDSB license here. So I've given you this code here, and again, I've put the note, do not provide this uh, code to students. So that's not the student's code, okay? So that's just you as the educator. Once you use that Quick Code, uh, the central team will uh, approve your account. Just uh, give us 24 hours to do so. And then you'll get a notification, your account has been approved. And then the next time you log in, you'll then see the YCDSB acronym uh, name underneath your, uh, your name. So you'll know that you've accessed the premium content at that point. Then uh, as Larissa showed, I have also broken down uh, how to uh, use a classroom, make a classroom. She's already showed all that, but I put there with the screenshots and whatnot. Um, at the time when you have created your classroom, that will pro, uh, provide you with that uh, class code. So this is your unique class code, uh, and that's the class code that you'll be given to your students, okay? So do not give the, the teacher code to the students, the one above, you give them the unique one that's for your own Edge Factor classroom, okay? So uh, once the students have completed uh, the login steps, they log in again using their K-12 account, they're going to um, use their quick code, they're going to join your class. And then as Larissa was saying, you would go under add edit users, and then you'll see that you have a list of pending students here as uh, the uh, screenshot shows. You'll see your students pending and you simply uh, you accept their invitations to join your class. Once that's done, then you can sort of uh, start curating the content into assignments uh, for your students. So again, how do you do that? Search the content. Uh, find the content, and then you want, you, you want to use that icon that has the add to icon, and you add that to your, uh, your Edge Factor classroom. Okay, so all of the instructions are here step by step. Leo's question about uh, which account you should use. Um, he's, I think, Leo, you're probably referring to sometimes there's uh, integrations with some products where when you're on the product, it says, you know, share to classroom when you just click your classroom right there and it automatically shares it. It's not quite like that. So you would, you know, the, the flow would be you, you, you do the setup process here, you make your edge factor class, you have your students join your class, um, and then you start creating your assignments, your playlists from there. And then so if today you're going to be using edge factor, you just write in your Google classroom, 
log into Edge Factor, go under our Edge Factor classroom, and you'll see the curated playlists and the assignments that you're working on today in Edge Factor. So that would sort of be your flow. You're not sort of sharing them individual assignments from Edge Factor. It doesn't work like that. You just tell them to log into Edge Factor, go on your class on Edge Factor, and you'll see the assignments there. No problem. Uh, that's it from my end. Uh, there are two minutes left. If anyone has any other questions for Larissa, um, we can entertain them now. I'm also going to put my email address in here so you can connect with us as well as our support team's email. And on that note, um, you can always reach out to anyone in the Pathways team for any questions. Um, and judging by the number of email requests that we're getting to join Edge Factor, um, I think this has been such a great success. Larissa, um, awesome. you have been an amazing presenter and so dynamic and so passionate about Edge Factor and what it can provide. And I feel that it's, it's just going to carry forward. And this recording will be made available and i'm sure that um as word gets out more and more teachers will be joining especially because you've made it so easy in terms of aligning our curriculum expectations and and pretty much checking off everything that we are looking for from representation to OU app to schism it, it's it's, fed, it's a fantastic resource so thank you so much thank you um Okay, can I say questions? one last quick thing? If nobody has any questions, I'm going to fit this last comment in, okay? Um, so right now, Edge Factor has funding to create stories. And here is what we would call a casting call link. If you have any companies uh, that fit the criteria of in, in the certain regions, and I would also say if, you've, if they have an Indigenous or uh, female or whatever the criteria is, that link um, we could film with them for free so we are, are actively looking for stories and of course what we film in one area in one region is available across the province so you might have some friends uh, that are uh, um, available that that you know have companies that uh, might fit that criteria feel free to send that link share that link with companies and uh, we would be able to film with them before august potentially so Last, uh, last call to action there. Thank you again, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful Easter blessed weekend as well. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Talk soon. Uh, so if there aren't any other questions, again, thank you, Larissa. Thank you to all, all of you who have joined us and taken time out of your lunch and your day. We really appreciate it. And spread the word. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thanks, Larissa. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Bye-bye.